In this video, we are going to be looking at the November 2020 Grade 11 exam paper, the physics paper, paper 1, question 8. Question 8, they say two identical point charges are placed 100 millimeters apart in a vacuum as shown below. The electrostatic force that Q1 exerts on Q2 is 5,09 newtons. Just remember the force that Q2 exerts on Q1 will also be 5,09 newtons, but it will be in the opposite direction. In 8.1, they want you to draw the electric field pattern between the two charges. I'm not going to do that with you because that is theory. So in 8.1, I have said, please learn the electric field patterns around positive and negative charges. You need to know how to draw those field patterns and remember this is three marks. 8.2, calculate the magnitude of each charge. So in 8.2, if we're going to calculate the magnitude of each charge, we want Q. We have the force. We've got Coulomb's constant, so we want Q1 and Q2. They've already told us that they are identical point charges. We've got the distance between them, so we're just going to substitute our force into the equation. Here's Coulomb's constant, and because the two charges are identical, I'm going to call Q1 and Q2 just Q. So in the place of Q times Q, I'm going to write Q squared. The distance between them is 100 millimeters, so you need to change that to meters. So that is 0, 0,1 meters, and it is squared. To go from millimeters to meters, you divide by a thousand. When we substitute and calculate, we get the charge on each of the two spheres, or each of the point charges, to be 2,38 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Please remember that is on both of them. That was 4 marks. In 8.3, calculate the net electric field at point P. Please note in 8.2, we used the force that was given, the electrostatic force. Now we're working with a net electric field. So we want the net electric field at point P. Here's point P, as shown on the diagram below. So point P is to the right of Q2. We know that these are two positive charges, it was indicated. Remember, the field patterns go, field lines go away from positive. So at point P, our electric field due to Q1 will be to the right, because field lines are always away from positive. So the field lines go away from Q1 at point P, and the field lines also go away from Q2 at point P. So I've drawn these two arrows to the right, which indicate the direction of the electric field at point P due to these two charges. The field at point P due to Q2 will be larger, so therefore I drew the arrow longer, just to indicate that. So we, in 8.3, need to calculate the net electric field at point P as shown in the diagram below. So we can use this equation. When your, your charged um, particles, your charged spheres, and your point are in a straight line, you can use this equation. The net electric field at point P is equal to the electric field at point P due to Q1, plus the electric field at point P due to Q2. Both of these electric fields are to the right, so I'm going to add them. And I've taken to the right as positive, and this is the equation from your data sheet that we are going to apply here. So from this step to this step, I've just applied that equation that I've done in pink. You substitute Coulomb's constant, you substitute your charge for Q1, and the distance that P is from Q1 is 100 millimeters plus 50 millimeters, which is 150 millimeters. And if you convert that to meters, it's 0, 0,15 meters. Remember to square that. Here is your electric field at point P due to Q2. Coulomb's constant, the charge of Q2, and the distance in meters from Q2 to point P. If you work out these two values and you add them, you get an electric field strength at point P of 9,52 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb to the right. Both electric fields are to the right 
at point P because these are positive charges. Field lines move away from positive charges. If point P was on the left-hand side, let's make a point R on the left-hand side, then your electric field due to Q1 would have been to the left, and your electric field due to Q2 at point R would also have been to the left. But we don't have a point there. Our point is on the right-hand side. In 8.4, a third charge, Q3, of magnitude 5 microcoulombs is now placed at point P as shown in the diagram below. So instead of point P, we've now got a third charge. Below the sketch, calculate the net electrostatic force. Now we're not working with electric field as we did in 8.3. We're now working with the electrostatic force experienced by point charge Q2 due to point charges Q1 and Q3. They want to know what is the force, the net force on this charge due to Q1 and due to Q3. So I've drawn two arrows to show the forces on Q2, first of all due to Q1. They're both positive, so Q1 will repel Q2 to the right. So the force of Q1 on Q2 is to the right. The force of Q3 on Q2 is to the left. Force of Q3 on Q2 is to the left. So these two forces are in opposite directions. So I need to choose a direction as positive. And in this case, I chose to the left as positive. So the force of Q3 on Q2 is to the left. That's in the positive direction. And the force of Q1 on Q2 is to the right. That's going to be in the negative direction. I worked out the two separate forces. Now remember, we're back with a force equation on your data sheet. So I've said the force of Q1 on Q2. So I'm using the two charges of Q1 and Q2. And then the distance between Q1 and Q2 was 0, 0,1 meters. Here are my two charges of Q1 and Q2. Remember, we worked them out in 8.2. Then this force is to the right. You actually don't even need to work it out because it is given. When you work it out, you get 5,1. But it is given initially in the question as 5,09 newtons. And this difference is because we rounded off in our first question here in 8.2. So you don't really need to work this out because it was given. This whole step does not need to be worked out. You can use the value of 5,09, which was given here initially in the question. That would be completely fine. Then we work out the force that Q3 exerts on Q2, and this one is to the left, because Q3 pushes Q2 to the left. Again, we substitute all our values, got Coulomb's constant, we've got the charge of Q2, we've got the new charge of the charge of our new um, sphere, Q3. 5 microcoulombs is 5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And the distance between Q2 and Q3 is 50 millimeters, so that's 0, 0,05 meters. And this is 42,84 newtons to the left. So when we calculate F net, it's the sum of the force of Q1 on Q2 and the force of Q3 on Q2. So the force of Q1 on Q2 Q1 on Q2, it's pushing it to the right, and to the right is going to be in the negative direction, so therefore I have negative 5,1, or you could have used negative 5,09 as it was given initially. The force of Q3 on Q2 is to the left, and that is in the positive direction. So when we add them, we get positive 37,74 newtons, we get a positive value, so therefore the net force is to the left, because we initially took to the left as positive.